Hi, this is your host Sapna Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Let's Talk. And today we have with us Amar Bandukwala, CEO and co-founder at Coder. Amar, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. It's great to be here. Tell us a bit about the company because you are also a co-founder. So what is Coder all about? Yeah, so I'll just, you know, quickly say kind of why we were founded. So as kids, we were programmers, me and my co-founder. And we noticed that whenever we wanted to actually build software, we were developing for an environment that was very dissimilar from our local machine, you know, whether we were on Mac developing for Linux or Windows developing for a server that was much larger than what we had locally. And so, yeah, we were always kind of challenged by this and you kind of resort to these weird workflows where you're uploading source code in a, you know, using a file sync or something like that. And it just became very cumbersome. And so really what we built the company to do is solve this problem. It's to move the actual development environment to some remote server that actually resembles your production environment. So you can, you know, just develop faster with less bugs. So are you like keeping the both copies in sync or uh, how does that work? Yeah, so there really is no local copy anymore. It's really just all on the server. And uh, kind of what's novel about Coder, um, you know, a natural question is why don't you just use VDI or VNC and just stream the remote desktop? And that's pretty slow, right? You're dealing with 20 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds latency. And especially if you're a programmer or someone who's creative, that lack of interactivity is quite damaging. Um, so yeah, with Coder, what we actually do is we run the IDE front end in the browser. So you have this really fast interactive editor that feels local, but then the IDE backend is, is ran in the server. And so that's how we kind of achieve this seamless experience. Who would you consider your target on is the fact is that everybody is running their workloads in the cloud. So they do have dev environment, production environment, testing. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, kind of uh, our ideal customer is a little bit surprising to many people. So you might expect this is going to be a tool used by like hip startups and, uh, you know, more, more of the bleeding edge type software firms. But in fact, the companies that benefit the most from this are kind of larger regulated companies, um, companies with very complicated development environments where development is really cumbersome and, and kind of unfortunate. And so, uh, yeah, so to get to your, your question about um, how exactly does this fit in with dev test prod, um, this is basically its own environment, but it looks just like your production environment. And so specifically with our product, you can encapsulate the development environment in a container and then you can actually use that same container for your development environment as you'd use for your production environment. So you have total symmetry on all the software tools and the, just the entire system configuration. And can you also share, uh, depending on how much you can share, either some of the use cases or you know if you can name those who are using it already? Yeah, so I, I can't name a lot of uh, specific customers, but I will name that. Um, in terms of our open source, which does kind of a part of this, uh, I think we have 25% of the Fortune 100 using the product. And our open source as well has over 100,000 monthly active users. Talk a bit about uh, the importance of open source for Coder, how important it is, not just from the perspective of consuming code, but also contributing back. So yeah, the open source is you know pretty key to our funnel. It's pretty key to our brand awareness. You know, we're we're developers by trade, we're not marketers. And so the easiest way to get a product out is just to, to make it free, let the world use it, and then create a paid version. And so, yeah, the open source gives you just the sort of single player experience where you can create this remote IDE. And specifically, we, we converted VS Code to run in this remote browser-based fashion. And then the enterprise product lets you actually take a set of computers and kind of uh, create this whole management experience where people can provision their own development environments. And while we're talking about open source, uh, you folks are also planning to uh, make an announcement or you're planning to release some code based on your open source as well. Tell us about that. Yeah, so we released this open source three years ago, Code Server, and uh, this was kind of our first foray into open source that really focused on making VS Code run in the browser. And so we have this large release actually planned for June where we're making it possible for um, basically anyone, any team in the world to get a remote development experience using any ID they want on any infrastructure. So it's kind of a full management solution around remote development. So yeah, we're pretty excited for this. There are two things that we look at in today's cloud native cloud centric world. One is of course, you have to make things easier. Uh, it should be of course, cost efficient. Uh, so when we look at Coder, what is the ROI that people can expect from it? 
this might seem kind of silly to some people, but honestly, a big ROI is just developer happiness. We have developers that some of our customers that say they would quit if Coder was taken away from them because their builds or tests are a lot faster. They're experiencing less bugs. They're just shipping more code. And so it's it's really just that simple. It's more developer flow, uh, more developer productivity. So you folks have been around for a while. What kind of evolution you have seen in the whole, you know, the world that we live in because things have changed uh, because of cloud native is uh, the way we are writing and deploying code has also changed. So how much changes you have seen from the perspective of writing the actual code and how the company itself has evolved with these changes? Yeah, I mean, it's huge. And the company wouldn't have been possible to start before we started. And I think that was a little bit of a coincidence. I mean, one huge thing is IDE vendors now have first class support for this kind of remote uh, uh, I guess, set up. And so like VS Code has VS Code Remote, JetBrains has JetBrains Gateway. And so with the IDE vendors actually supporting it themselves, it's a lot more reliable. It's a lot more applicable to more developers. The other thing is just the rise of containerization. Um, the rise of containerization makes it very simple for you to define a production environment that's exactly like your development environment. And so if we didn't have these two sort of technological trends, it would have been a lot harder to make people use the product. Amar, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about the company, also talk about the problem that I think most of us kind of overlook and we sometimes assume that this is a solved problem, but the way you uh, mentioned it, that it does look like, you know, that it just makes life so much more easier and, you know, it, uh, the whole process becomes easier. So thanks for sharing those insights. And I would love to have you back on the show because I'm pretty sure that you folks have a lot of things to talk about. Yeah, thanks a lot for having me. I'd love to be back at some point.